Hello, hello, everybody. I know I haven't been doing much uh, Count Dankula, Mad Lads in a while, and y'all yeah, love them. Y'all yeah, love them. And I forgot why I didn't do money, but hey, we're back. Okay, bad late than never. So this, I think this is. He, I think he released this two days ago. So this is Charles has little pum. Nothing Let's forges heroes quite like the fires of war. True, and with that heroism comes awards and glory. But today's mad lad wasn't interested in any of that. Despite spending World War II saving lives, dodging enemy fire on a regular basis, and constantly getting into Houdini-esque hijinks with prison guards, this mad lad's greatest challenge was trying to avoid taking credit for a laundry list of heroics. Why? Captain Charles Hazlitt. Up. Damn, he looks like a fucking Chad though. Look at that face. Charles has lit his lit up him. Up yours, buddy. But before we get into the mad lad, Shall this let's... video was brought to you by Raycon. Oh. Raycons provide premium wireless audio for around half the price of its market competitors. The company was co-founded by Ray J and has been endorsed by celebrities like Mike Tyson, Rich the Kid and Snoop Dogg. And Raycon's wireless everyday E25 earbuds are their best ones yet, with 6 hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass and a compact design for a comfortable, noise isolating fit. They come in a range of fun colours and patterns and with a 45 day free return policy. So get yourself some Raycons day? at my it's link weird. down below, buyraycon.com slash dankula to get 15% off your order. Charles has lit up him was born on the 21st of September 1908 in New Zealand and he was the son of a lawyer. He was educated at Christ's College where some of his Christ defining College. traits began to manifest. Upham was nicknamed Pug. Good nickname. <laughs> Has some racist connotations but we can let that slide. Pug? Wait, wait, wait. He was what is Pug racist for? I'm really bad with racist uh, wording and stuff. I don't know most of them. I know like the usual ones, you know, the N words and stuff like that. But there's a like I I've been finding out that there's been a lot of stuff that are like racist that you call certain people that I didn't know was racist. Was and most of them are weird and stupid. By the way, spirit of mild belligerence towards things he did not believe in, which was demonstrated by how often he stood up to bullies. Uh. Upham earned a diploma in agriculture at Lincoln College in 1930, and he worked as so he buried some crops in World War Two. As a farm manager and musterer for six years, so according Sorry. to his boss, Upham was very kind to all of the animals that he worked with, and he very often went out of his way to get them a little extra feed. In 1935, cool he met Molly McTamney and they got engaged in 1938. Mala. During this time, he also got a job with the New Zealand government's land valuation department while he was doing a postgraduate course in valuation and farm management. But then, in September of 1939, destiny came calling as World War II started, and Upham volunteered to join the army, joining the 20th Battalion of the 2nd New Zealand Expeditionary Force. Expeditionary Upham shipped Force. out to Egypt in December and was quickly promoted to sergeant before seeing action in Greece and then withdrawing to the island of Crete, which the Germans invaded on the 20th of May 1941. And from this point onwards, Upham fought like an absolute unit and got really busy over a period of nine days. Despite having little artillery, no air support, and no communications, Upham led his platoon in a counter-attack on Malem Airfield 
under the cover of darkness, advancing over 3,000 yards without any support. And during this... So 3,000 yards is 2.7 kilometers. ...advance, Upham managed to destroy four enemy machine gun turrets with hand grenades. Damn, brother. When the attack failed, he helped with the evacuation of wounded soldiers, demonstrating great concern for the well-being of his men and putting himself at great risk to help those under his command. When Upham was ordered to send his two best men to go across and lead out an isolated German platoon 600 yards deep in German territory, he instead put a corporal in charge of his platoon and did it himself because Damn. it was, and I quote, too dangerous. Too dangerous. What to a give lad. To anyone else. Damn. And on his way to do this, Upham killed 22 German soldiers. That's a pre kill but count, But he didn't brother. get out of this unscathed. His shoulder was wounded by mortar fire, and he also caught a bullet in the foot. During another in mission, when two Germans managed to get the drop on Upham and fired on him, he dropped to the ground and played dead. Then, with one of Killed his arms up. in a sling, Upham used a tree to support his rifle and waited for the right moment. The right moment came and he fired, killing one of the Germans. Up Bro, and then reloaded. Okay, let's be fucking honest. Some of these stories about what some soldiers have been through and like how many wounds they've sustained and still being able to operate, it makes you wonder. Like, these people are not made from normal people stuff, okay? Pretty sure if I get shot in the shoulder, then shot a couple more times, shot a couple more times, I ain't getting up, uh, putting my rifle to a fucking tree and shooting the people. Probably dead, bleeding out, you know, but... His rifle Probably start hailing them. You know. like, hey. And then shot the other German. <laughs> Mustache for and the, the other German had actually managed to get so close that when he fell, he landed on the rifle's muzzle. Damn. And also, Upham managed to do all of this while suffering from dysentery. What? Despite his protests. Wait, what is dysentery? Up One second. Okay, dysentery is a infectious disease that causes some awful stuff. Like puking, blood shitting, blood shitting a lot. And yeah, it's not good. It's not good. Upham was among those evacuated to Egypt on the 31st of May, where he recovered from his injuries and was promoted to captain. Now, if there is one thing that Upham did not like, it was praise. He did not like being praised. He saw himself as just a normal man doing his duty. So he was absolutely horrified to find out that he had been awarded a medal. the Victoria Cross, which is the highest award for gallantry in the face of the Damn. enemy. Upham said that this award was for his men because he believed that they deserved it more than he okay. did. And he it's a very cool lad. Damn, brother. I'm glad we're checking out something like this after the last video, which was kind of sad, kind of stupid. You know, with those two dumbasses that shot up a bank. This is a lot more you know, wholesome. I mean, still, he killed like 30 people, but hey. Only accepted it on behalf of those he fought with. And as you would expect, his citation for the Victoria Cross was absolutely stacked with feats of bravery, saying that he had, and I quote, performed a series of remarkable exploits showing outstanding leadership, tactical skill, and utter indifference to danger. In mid-July 1942, the Germans attacked Ruisat Bridge during the First Battle of Alamein. But Upham remained fearless despite being out in the open and under heavy fire. It was here that Upham really demonstrated his leadership capabilities really? as he put himself at great risk to check on and shout encouragement to his men, which even spurred on his commanding officer. Upham then <sighs> managed to single-handedly overrun several enemy machine gun posts and he also managed to destroy a literal truck full of German soldiers How? with hand grenades. How? Although he did slightly wound both of his arms from his own grenades in the process. 
Whenever Oppum needed to get an kill okay. to advance. Like, when, when someone says these things, like, it's it's really easy to believe in a video game that you do this, right? Because you, you regenerate health and stuff like that. I don't know, that shit don't happen, brother. You get shot, it fucking hurts. And it hurts for a while. <laughs> How did this dude take do so many things? What was he using his giant ball sack as like a protection shield? Being like, well, bob and weave behind the ball sack, and lead with the ball sack. He drove to the himself in a jeep with a German machine gun mounted on it, straight through enemy lines. Did he also and shoot the machine point, gun while he driving? Got his jeep stuck in the sand, most likely due to the weight of his balls of steel. Agree. And so he ordered some nearby soldiers to push it out. However. These soldiers German were Italian. Oh. And they were pretty surprised to be receiving orders from an enemy soldier. But they did they did it anyway. I mean, to be honest, to be honest, let's think about this. Some fucking crazy maniac goes through a jeep, kills like a hundred of your soldiers, uh, a jeep, no, no, not a jeep, a truck full of soldiers, a couple of uh, mounted machine gun positions, drives a jeep through your fucking front lines, through your defenses, jeep gets stuck, all your people are dead, probably, there's two of you, and he goes like, push the truck, push the truck, what do you do? I got it, brother, I'm pushing the fucking truck. I am pushing the truck. I don't know what I would do that, brother. They helped him get his jeep unstuck. Did he shoot them? We have no idea why they helped him. I mean, they just they did. did. Maybe, maybe they recognized him and thought, Jesus Christ, that's Charles up him. Just, just get him in his jeep and get him the Jesus hell out Christ of here. Jesus Christ is Jesus Christ. We don't want that kind of trouble. I assume man, it was something like that. The man was such a chad. That he could literally command enemy soldiers. Upham then used. Is this the dude that commanded Hitler to take the shot? Used the intel he was delivering to lead a successful bayonet charge against the Germans. Bruh. But he was shot in the arm, shattering his left elbow. Ooh. He oh. then had the broken arm dressed and returned straight back to the fight, fighting against overwhelming odds in the German counter attack until he was left unable to walk due to taking mortar shrapnel to the leg. Upham was then captured by the Germans. Only he and five others in his company survived the attack. Oof. Upham's actions... Okay. And I think I can predict what happened. So, they capture him and he goes, you guys are gonna let me go. They let him go. In this battle went on to Let's earn see. him a bar and another Victoria Cross, making him the third person to earn the Victoria Cross twice and the only combatant to do so. Upon Wait, hearing the about two? the recommendation, King George VI was sceptical since earning two... One second, one second, one second. Okay, I'm back, sorry about that. ...and the only combatant to do so. Upon hearing about the recommendation, King George VI was sceptical since earning two Victoria Crosses so quickly was such an incredible feat. So he asked Major General Howard okay, Kippenberger... Okay. He's not gonna explain the other ones. Okay, so I went and I read about it. I also wrote good old pen to paper what happened to the other ones. I hate when people do things in like this, so I'm gonna fix it up a little bit, I guess. I hate when they say, oh, the other two did some things, but never stayed in full. Okay, so first one, uh, the other one that got like two Victoria Crosses was Sergeant Captain Arthur Martin Leake, who was an army doctor. And the first one he got was in 1902 due to... he. Okay, the dude was 100 meters away from enemy troops and he was tending to people. Got shot, still tended to people until he fell unconscious. Dude fell unconscious because he was shot and stuff. While tending to people a hundred meters away from enemies. Okay, I want you to think about it. So they gave him one in 1902. 1914, he did the same shit again. Okay. <laughs> I just want you to think about this. Think about this. The dude 
That was his second one, okay? He died at 1953 at the age of 79. Good lad, good lad. The other one was Captain Noan Chavasi. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. He was also trained as a doctor, but he was also a fighter. So it's not technically correct. But he did, one of his was just because he was a doctor that they gave him. Anyway, first one that he got was in 1917. Um, fighting, losing battle, I think. Uh, got hit by shrapnel and carried a man 500 meters. And in total, they say that the dude saved around 20 wounded people. So they gave him the medal in 1917. 1917 again, he got a skull fracture in another battle. They were losing ground, so he ordered the people, you know, he was in a doctor camp, he ordered the people to retreat. He did not retreat! Crazy maniac stayed for two more days, helping people, starving people, and unfortunately he suffered more wounds and passed away at the age of 32. So yeah, unfortunately he passed away, but he was a crazy lad, okay? And he, saw, he was not only a doctor, he was also a fighter, so I don't know, but yeah. Technically, the dude only received uh, awards for being a fighter, so I guess the statement is correct. Anyway, uh, I hope y'all, I mean, my information given to you guys is a lot more, a lot worse than his, but eh, at least you know more F stuff Popham now. F. really deserved it. And the Major General replied, in my respectful opinion, sir, Upham won the Victoria Cross several times over. Mm. Upham was very badly wounded when he was captured and he recovered as a prisoner in an Italian hospital. The Italian doctor wanted to amputate his arm because they were Oi. too poorly supplied to prevent Oi. gangrene. But Upham refused because the amputation would have been carried out without anaesthetic. And this was a decision that likely saved Upham's life. But luckily, an allied POW doctor dressed his wound and prevented it from becoming gangrenous. Nice. But after recovering, Upham's time as a prisoner was a very painful and difficult experience. For the Germans. I was waiting for something like that. I was waiting for him to say, like, oh, he killed them all. Camp, 10,000 10, people, he killed them all. How did he do that? He fucking did it, brother. Why are you asking questions? He as did we it. learned earlier in his life, Upham was an absolute nightmare for people that he didn't like. And he did not like the Germans. He messed with, inconvenienced, and infuriated them every chance he got. While being transported through Italy in a truck, Upham tried to use a kitchen knife to saw through the floor of the truck. When this plan didn't work, he just yeeted himself out of the truck at a bend in the road and then bolted for 370 metres with a broken ankle oh. before being recaptured. Another time, he was being Damn. moved between prison camps on a train under the guard of two Germans. He bid the train. And to stop him from trying anything funny, he was only allowed to go to the toilet while the train was travelling at high speed to stop him from jumping out of the window. He jumped out of the window anyway. I'm not surprised. I'm not oh, surprised. I love, <laughs> I love him so much. Unfortunately, because the train was travelling at high speed, he knocked himself out when he landed on the tracks. The Germans... Simply stopped the train, got him back, walked back, picked him up, <laughs> and him loaded his unconscious ass back on the train. <laughs> but the most iconic incident, the one yuck. that Upham is really well known for, happened during one of his very many escape attempts from a prison camp. <laughs> the camp was surrounded by two fences, and in the gap between them were massive piles of barbed wire. Upham tried to climb to the top of the interior fence and jump, jump from the top of it to the exterior he did fence not get it. so that he could escape and also avoid all of the barbed wire. He did not get it, did he? But unfortunately, when he jumped, he lost his grip oh. and fell into the barbed wire and became tangled. 
two German guards on patrol then discover up him. Just sitting there, tangled in a giant pile of barbed wire, you know, just just chilling. Bruh. So the Germans ordered him to get out. What? And the Germans... The thing with barbed wire is, I don't... I, I, if you're tangled, how the fuck do you get out of barbed wire? I mean, technically I understand how you get out of it, but... You're fucked. Oh no. Trying to give up him an order was their first mistake. He just stood Upham there. instead just laid back. I mean, that's probably the best you know, thing. Just, just laid back in a giant pile of barbed wire. I mean, and listen, to be honest, that's probably the best way to deal with barbed wire. Have it cut from the sides maybe and then just pull it out then so it doesn't tangle even more up into your skin. Ah. Oh. I don't know. Oh, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Said to the two guards, come in and get me. But how did this they not shoot this man? obviously <laughs> infuriated the Germans because they were too scared to go into the barbed wire <laughs> and actually get him. So one of the guards pointed his rifle in Upham's face. And Upham responded to this threat Do it, pussy. by lighting up a smoke looking the German right in the eye and saying Do it pussy. I refuse to be shot by a corporal. Oof. Bring back an officer. Oof. This man is currently relaxing in a giant <laughs> pile of barbed wire Smoking. like a Comfy Max 2000 luxury leather recliner and the German points a gun in his face and he tells the German to go and get his dad. How, how is this man real? Surprisingly, the corporal actually obeyed Upham's order to speak to the manager. <laughs> so the corporal brought Commandant Houtman Knapp, who ordered his men to take a picture of Upham as evidence so they could initiate disciplinary procedures against him. And look at this. <laughs> Just look at the absolute chattery of this image. The chattery of this image. This man is lying on barbed wire like a hammock on a sunny beach, smoking and laughing in the faces of German soldiers threatening to kill him. This, ladies and gentlemen, this, Can't make this is shit a man. Can't make it's this funny shit how he looked more comfortable tangled in barbed wire with a gun in his face right down than the ceremony, right? Victoria yeah, Cross. True. But surely it's better to have a piece of brass stuck to your chest than a bullet. And speaking of which, Commandant Knapp actually knew about Upham's disdain at receiving the Victoria Cross. So Knapp held a fake ceremony to pin a replica Victoria Cross on Upham in an attempt to insult and humiliate He sounds like a troll. Was this the first documentary of a troll? In response, Upham spit directly in, in Knapp's face. <laughs> I can just After this ball. escape attempt, Upham was placed in solitary confinement, where he was only allowed to exercise alone, while being watched by two armed guards, and covered by a guard in a tower with a machine gun. <laughs> They finally had him pinned down, as any wrong move would result in him getting torn to shreds. Or so they thought. Up him. That fucking pause ran he for does. It anyway. Where? He ran for it anyway. Where did he run? Straight out of the courtyard, through the German barracks. Through the barracks. He ran through the barracks and right out of the front gate. Luckily. Upham managed to survive this because in a display of good sportsmanship, they didn't shoot the him. guard in the tower had decided not to shoot him out of sheer respect. But also because the guard could see German soldiers coming up the road to recapture Upham, so there really wasn't much point in shooting him. This ended up being the last straw. Yeah, I was wondering, why are they being so so nice to him like is it because he's like a, is he important uh, they must have known about him so i, I assume they were using him as like a important prisoner of war something like that because i don't think anyone normal would be given this much leeway they probably would have uh, they probably wouldn't have i don't know if they would have taken him back and shot him i don't know 
Germans Interesting. had had enough of Upham's crap. Just fucking die so him So they up. sent him to Colditz Castle on the 14th of October, 1944, which is the place that they sent political prisoners and incorrigible allied officers that kept escaping from other camps. Oh. <laughs> Soon after arriving, Upham said to a fellow inmate, what the hell is this place? It looks bloody awful to me. <laughs> but despite the hardship of being stuck in the notorious Colditz, Upham gave as good as he got and continued to Trying be to an escape. absolute pain in the <laughs> ass for his captors. God damn it. Unfortunately, he ended up staying here for a while because the place lived up to its reputation of being escape proof. Okay, but listen. Then... I mean, the dude is very brave. I mean, he's a cool dude, right? His escape plans were not not the best so far, okay, from what we've seen. So I'm not too surprised about this. Despite Hermann Goring boasting that no allied planes would ever By the way, fly from what I've seen, he's the only only one that got the Victorian Cross twice in World War Two. All the other ones were from World War One, right? Yeah. Interesting. I over German territory. Upham got a helping hand on the 16th of April, 1945. 45. Air raid sirens went off. And everyone was pretty surprised when American bombers showed up and started bombing the absolute hell out of the area. But Upham was in the courtyard as this was happening. And seeing the perfect opportunity to twist the knife a little and get the last word in, he walked right up to a German officer that he particularly disliked. And he said to the man, Hey Eggers, you know what Hermann said? Never any Allied aircraft to fly over Germany. Well, what do you think those are up there? Bloody ducks. <laughs> oh, he's a cheeky bastard. Yes, he Even is. though most of the prisoners yes, freed in the camp's liberation went straight back to Britain, Upham still had plenty of fight left in him, and he was prepared to join up with an American unit and get straight back to kicking arse. But, to his disappointment, he was sent back to Britain instead. Ah. The war was now over for Upham, but it wasn't all doom and gloom because he was reunited with his fiance Molly, uh, who was serving as a nurse. Nice. King George VI also awarded him with his Victoria Cross and bar, which he accepted in a typically humble fashion, hmm. saying, naturally, I feel some pride in this distinction, but hundreds of others have done far more than I did. They could have given it to one of them. Upham and Molly then got married in Hampshire on the 20th of June, 1945, and they returned to New Zealand by the end of the year. Upon his return to New Zealand, Upham was very embarrassed by the sheer generosity of his community who came together and raised £10,000 to buy him a farm in recognition of his heroics. And adjusted for inflation, that today is worth £441,000. Now that is a huge amount of money that you could buy one hell of a farm with. This was an extremely generous <laughs> gift that his community offered to him. What did she do? What did she do? The absolute saint that he is donated. He just couldn't accept the money. Upham instead used this money to establish a trust for the children of ex servicemen to study at Lincoln University or the College of Canterbury. And this trust was known as the C. H. Upham Scholarship. Damn. And he helped eighty eight kids gain an education. What a fucking He also lad. used the leftover money to establish an award for gallantry within the community, with one recipient being a police dog handler who risked his life to rescue an inmate from the rooftop of a mental institution. Yeah. Upham applied for a Was veteran's the dog rehabilitation well. loan Sorry. to buy his own sheep farm, where he worked happily and quietly with his wife and three daughters. The farm also served as a horse sanctuary because Upham couldn't bear the thought of old farm horses being turned into glue. But despite all of the old farm horses being turned into glue. Oi. But despite all of this wholesomeness, Upham 
still had his grudges. Oh no. He had a complete ban on any and all German vehicles and machinery from his farm. <laughs> Upham <Therefore> absolutely <laughs> shunned attention and was very adamant in downplaying his own role in the war. Say that German tractor over there? J German tractor. Kill it, shoot it, shoot it. And I quote, I don't want to be treated differently from any other bastard. <laughs> Despite the fanfare yeah. that came with his military honours yeah. and refusing all calls to run for public office, Upham managed to settle down and enjoy the anonymity he craved throughout his military career. Although he did speak up in 1962 when he denounced Britain trying to enter the common market, saying, and I quote, Britain will gradually be pulled down and down. Based. Upham later Based. doubled down on this position again in 1971, 71. saying, your politicians have made money their god, but what they are buying is disaster. Hmm. If only he knew how right he was. <laughs> Unfortunately for Upham, his aggressively humble attitude combined with his heroism ended up resulting in what was probably his most harrowing capture in 1985. Wait, 85? Your Excellency, I'd, uh, I'd like to apologise for intruding on your cocktail party this evening, but then you, uh, well, you do know exactly why I'm here, don't you? Yes, I do. As a matter of fact, you've been a great deal of help in getting our subject here to Wellington tonight without uh, the person... Oh, that, is that him to the left? Is that him? Sabotage wasn't my long suit. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've been a tremendous amount of help. I need some more help, however. I wonder if... Sir, can I ask you, please, to read to me what it says on the cover of this book? Mm -hmm. This is your life, Charles Upham. Mm. What? Bruh, I'm pretty sure my boy was doing better in the German prison than this. Oh, damn, he looks so uncomfortable. Captain Upham, I would feel very privileged indeed if you would join me in a trip back to the Avalon Television Studios for what is going to be a very special television program. Jump from the train? Thank you. It's a story of a man who has two Victoria Crosses. Now he wants to kick him in the ass. Awesome half hour of his old friends and war buddies talking about how amazing he is on national TV. That sounds like the worst thing. To most you. people, this would be yeah. a lovely and heartwarming thing. But Upham absolutely hated being praised, <laughs> so he was absolutely horrified by it. He looks like it. Oh, no. Oh, bro. Upham retired in January. Damn. He of looks so uncomfortable. He looks so uncomfortable. 1994, due to poor health. Oh. And sadly, he passed away on the 22nd of November that year at the age of 86. Mm. His funeral was carried out with full military honours in a cathedral with 5,000 people Damn. in the streets paying their respects. And he is buried at St. Paul's Church in Papua Nui. Whether he wanted to be one or not, Charles Upham really earned his status as a hero, considering his selflessness, concern for his own men, and complete disregard for his own safety for the sake of others. It's no wonder that this Kiwi Captain America was the most highly decorated Commonwealth soldier <laughs> of World War II. Captain he America. certainly earned his bronze statue that Ooh. was erected in North Canterbury. What is that? Though I Bro, feel if he even was the statue looks uncomfortable. They got that pretty well. Still alive. Good job, Arthur. He would be absolutely furious about that. <laughs> Probably. Even though Upham said that he'd have been happier if he had never received the Victoria Cross because of all the expectations of putting him. And even though he said that all of his military honours are the property of the men in his unit. Still, everything that he managed to accomplish in his life, in times of both war and peace, and his strength of character throughout all of it, well, it's just truly inspiring. True. Thank you for your service, and everyone, pay respects to this amazing man, 
who looked his captors in the eye and said, told them, I'm not boom, locked boom. in here with you. You're locked in Arch. here with me. Arch. It's count thank you on YouTube. Everybody says subscribe. <laughs>